So let me begin uh, by saying it's good to gather once again in this way, although um, we're thankful for the opportunity. Uh, we certainly do look forward to gathering in person at some point, Lord willing, in the near future, although that might not be the case. Uh, we'll have to see. But that's part of our prayer. And so let's begin by praying right now. Oh, Heavenly Father, it is a joy to set aside this day for rest and worship. And with the restrictions, perhaps there are many who are dying to get to work, as it were, who are really anxious to get out and about, who are um, feeling uh, cooped up and, and closed in. Uh, so, Father, we pray that today you would help us to find rest for our souls and peace for our minds as we remember your grace, your goodness, your sovereignty, your care, and your calling for us, that even though we may be, as it were, stuck at home, there is much we can do for you and your kingdom and for others, whether it is in terms of prayer or uh, helping provide or all sorts of other ways. So as we think and talk about the discipline of Christian service for the purpose of godliness, O oh Lord, work in our hearts and minds that we might know and understand who we are and what you have called us to do and to be. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome uh, again those of us who are here, and we look forward to uh, seeing each other face to face, Lord willing, at some point. Although, with our eternal perspective, we know that there is the possibility that that point uh, won't be until heaven, and that will be okay uh, as God wills. But this morning, uh, I'd like to look at this um, discipline of serving. Uh, Don Whitney has an entire chapter on it. Uh, it's not one of the typical spiritual disciplines that we think about. The other resource that I've been using as a primary resource, David Mathis, The Habits of Grace, does not have this as one of the spiritual disciplines, but it's a very good one. In fact, as I was preparing, uh, uh, it came to mind I should have done this one last week and fasting this week because uh, oftentimes our mothers are servants in the home to a degree that we need to recognize and appreciate. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about uh, our own service as a spiritual discipline, each one of us, uh, no matter what our relationships are. So let's uh, begin by uh, thinking about here, what are the spiritual disciplines? So who, uh, who should I serve or why should I serve? Um, why should I uh, allow uh, this to be something I even think about? Why should I uh, want to consider uh, this as a spiritual discipline? Uh, sometimes when we think about serving, uh, all sorts of expectations by others get in the way of us remembering that as believers, we're serving the Lord. Uh, in everything we do, whether we eat or drink, we do it to the glory of God. If we work, we work uh, not for men, not for others, but for God. And so let's just think here a little bit about uh, the first reason. And the first reason why we should serve is because Jesus Christ is our Savior. So we serve because we've been saved. Uh, we've been saved to be a servant of the Lord. We've been saved to serve others, even as Christ has uh, loved us and saved us. And, and as Jesus himself said, he came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So it's, it's because we are uh, saved by grace uh, that we are excited about serving God and others. Uh, it is because Jesus Christ is our Lord that we are looking to serve others. Uh, we are servants of the Lord, and we care about what Christ desires. But there are other uh, things that we ought to think about too. And so as we think about this, we, we need to ask ourselves, are we serving 
God? Are we looking at our service in the home, in the church, in our community, at our workplace as service to God? The reality is that each one of us, all of us, are serving God. The question is whether we are serving God well, whether we're serving him intentionally, uh, whether we are serving him uh, in a way that others can see and witness uh, that we are serving God. And it won't always be uh, explicit. Uh, we, won't, uh, we won't always wear a badge or uh, put a stamp on our service uh, necessarily, but it will be obvious uh, to many. Now, with regard to expectations, we need to make sure that we are studying Scripture to know what God teaches about serving, uh, that we aren't only bringing uh, our own um, traditional expectations. In other words, the expectations that are comfortable to us, the expectations we've been taught in our own churches or in our own homes. Lord willing, there are many good reasons why we serve that we have learned from a young age. In fact, that's one thing that as parents we ought to really think about. We ought to understand that part of our parenting is teaching our children to serve God and serve others. And so as we think about the expectations of serving uh, as a spiritual discipline, we want to make sure that our expectations are scriptural or biblical, uh, that they're based in God's word and not simply in our own imaginations or in the expectations of others. So uh, last thing, uh, and, and, it, and it ties into that, is that we want to, uh, the Bible talks a lot about the fear of the Lord. Proverbs, for instance, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so as we think about serving as a spiritual discipline, we want to do so out of the fear of God, a, a reverence uh, for God, a desire to please God, uh, a um, a prayer that we are, are um, uh, glorifying him. We want to fear God, not man, uh, not others, uh, not the expectations of parents or pastors or children, or not, not that those are necessarily bad, but our primary, uh, primary reason to serve uh, is that we have a fear of the Lord that is motivating us uh, a fear of God that is giving us wisdom as to what this service looks like. Well, why should we serve? We should serve because Jesus Christ is our Savior and our Lord. But where should we serve? Where are we called to serve? And, and this, this call doesn't need to be uh, words in the sky. It doesn't need to be an audible voice. Uh, uh, calling to serve comes from the very fact that we are saved. And so we, we want to know where, where should I serve? Um, and the first place uh, that we can say we are called to serve is wherever we are. Uh, as, as we know, uh, sometimes God's providence places us uh, in situations that we would rather not be. But wherever we are, we have an opportunity to serve God and serve others. Even, even just think about uh, becoming ill and lying in a hospital bed. Are there opportunities for us to serve God and others as we are being cared for by doctors and nurses and, and visited by family and friends? Absolutely. Uh, we, even though we are flat on our back, by God's grace, we'll still be able to pray. Uh, we'll still be able to um, be gracious in our response if we're uh, Lord willing. And, and so wherever we are, uh, we, can, we can serve God and others. But more specifically, uh, as we think about intentional service or the discipline of service, we ought to understand that we are called to serve in the church, in the local church, in the universal church. We are called to serve the Lord uh, among God's people, and we are called to love one another as Christ has loved us. And remember that that command, the new commandment, is given in the context of Jesus serving his disciples, 
removing his outer garments and putting a towel around his waist and picking up the basin of water and washing his disciples' feet. And so we need to understand that the church gives us multiple opportunities to serve God and serve others as, as we live as the body of Christ, as we are gathered as God's people and are ministering in his name. And so we need to uh, be thoughtful about this. Uh, we need to ask ourselves uh, questions about serving in the church and, and desire to do it well. We also are called to serve in our homes. Uh, if we have family, uh, then these are kind of the front lines of our, these individuals are the front lines of our service, which is one of the things that prompted me to say I should have <clears throat> I looked at this spiritual discipline last week as we celebrated Mother's, uh, Mother's Day, because uh, mothers are exemplary uh, in serving the family. Uh, we, we see that uh, in, in, in a, a mother of a newborn, uh, the mother of a newborn is, has bonded with this baby and, and loves to meet its, his or her needs, uh, whether it's changing diapers, which can get really old and smelly, uh, or whether it's feeding or just snuggling or caring for in all sorts of ways. Um, now, this is, uh, as we think about this, the other thing we ought to think about uh, is that, is the recognition, the reality that service is not easy and that there are, there are barriers to serving in the church, but perhaps the hardest place for us to serve God and serve others is in the home. Now, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the reasons for that, but just keep that in mind and, and consider this um, reality that perhaps one of the hardest places for us to serve and, and to embrace this discipline of serving is in the home. Well, last one, and it's certainly the broadest one, uh, because we are called to serve in the world, uh, wherever we are, right? So in our neighborhood, in our homes, our homes have neighbors most often. Uh, our apartments have neighbors. And so in the world, we're called to serve others, serve God and serve others. In the workplace, in school, uh, wherever we are in the world. Now, some are called to go overseas. Uh, some are called to serve other cultures, other people. Uh, but each of us are called to serve uh, in the world that we live in. We are not to isolate ourselves. We are not of the world, but we are in the world. And so we need to reckon with that as we think about this discipline of service. Now, as we think about this as a spiritual discipline, there are some questions uh, in our minds, at least there were in my mind as I began uh, preparing for this and as I, after I first read this and read some other things too. Uh, why think of serving as a discipline? Well, there are several reasons that Whitney gives, and I'd like to give uh, some additional ones as well. But first of all, we understand that as we pursue godliness or pursue Christ-likeness, this is one way that we can uh, be more like Jesus. Jesus, who is the servant of the Lord, Jesus who came to serve and not to be served, um, Jesus who calls us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. Uh, this is a wonderful avenue to grow in grace and godliness, to grow in holiness, to pursue this, uh, means that this is a good discipline for us, not just an occasional thing, not just as we want to or as it's convenient, but we want to pursue godliness, and so we'll embrace this discipline of serving. Uh, we also understand that it's a discipline because it's for the sake of Christ and his kingdom. And so we want to be intentional. We want to give conscious effort toward serving. If Christ has called us to serve, and if his kingdom is, is uh, expanded, is, if, if we are 
servants in his kingdom, then we will say, yes, this, this servanthood is something I want to I want to be disciplined in. I want to make a daily part of my life. I want to have a habit here. I want to learn more of what it looks like. There's also something that perhaps we haven't thought of when it comes to the discipline of serving, and that is the sin that needs to be mortified, the sin that needs to be crucified or killed. Uh, if we are serving others, serving God and serving others, what stands in the way of that? What are some of the, the natural um, fleshly desires uh, that would prohibit us or inhibit us from serving? Sloth, right? Uh, if we're lazy, and, and I would dare say most all of us naturally find an inclination toward this in some areas or some ways, um, but the discipline of serving helps to mortify sloth. It helps us to put off laziness and self-centeredness in that way. The other thing that the discipline of serving helps us crucify is pride. And I, it's hard to overstress the importance of this. Pride gets us into trouble all the time. Uh, we are naturally proud people. We, we think the best of us and we think less of others. We think that our agenda is primary. We think that our desires should take priority over other people and their desires. We, we, if we think that we're, we're the bee's knees. Uh, and so uh, if serving, the discipline of serving, this conscious effort to lower ourselves to a place of servant, uh, to love by serving others in tangible ways, uh, mortifies our pride and builds humility. Uh, the, the one, one other thing here uh, is that we, the discipline of serving means that we are training ourselves. And we all need to grow in this. We all need to be trained. And so uh, to understand serving as a discipline helps us in, uh, helps us pursue this, helps us say, yes, this is something that I need to uh, practice. Um, if, if we don't practice serving, then the likelihood is that we will serve very little. Uh, it will be unnatural and uncomfortable and inconvenient and will make all sorts of excuses why we can't or why we shouldn't. Um, but if we embrace serving as a spiritual discipline, then we will be willing to be trained. We, were willing, we will be willing to, to start and... and um, and, and think about how to be intentional. Uh, think about what we can do and what we ought to do and why we ought to do it. Uh, in, in addition, there's also this idea of being an example for others. Uh, isn't it an encouragement when we see others serving joyfully and we want to appreciate them, we want to encourage them, and we want to be like them? Uh, the discipline of serving is something that we can embrace, but also we can be uh, a model for others in our lives. Last thing here is that uh, as we think about serving as a spiritual discipline, we must understand that oftentimes it won't be disciplined service, but spontaneous service. God will show us an opportunity, and because we've practiced being a servant, because it is now natural for us to be more Christ-like in this way, then serving others will be a spontaneous thing. It'll just be part of who we are. Uh, it, it's, uh, it'll become a very natural, uh, God-glorifying, and wonderfully uh, beautiful uh, blessing to others and to ourselves. So spontaneous service, as we think about the discipline, uh, the spiritual discipline of serving, we ought not to think that there's no place for spontaneous service. There will always be a place for spontaneous service. But as we grow in the spiritual discipline of serving, 
the that spontaneous nature of of serving others uh, will become more frequent, more joyful, and so on. Let's talk a little bit about the motivations to serve. Um, I hope that uh, perhaps as we go through these slides, uh, you are talking to others, uh, whether taking notes to um, speak on the phone afterwards with someone else or uh, whoever, if there's someone you're watching with, you're, you're talking to them, turning to them and saying, hey, this is uh, quite strange or this is quite wonderful, uh, whatever the case is. Um, but let's talk about some motivations to serve. This is uh, this slide will be from Don Whitney's book, and it's very good. He has a paragraph on each of these, and uh, we won't take time to necessarily go through his entire description, but as a tease, as a, as a, um, a, a, a snippet, uh, these are very good, I think, questions for us to ask ourselves and, and to pray for self-awareness to answer, answer rightly. Am I motivated by a desire to obey? Uh, serve the Lord is not an infrequent uh, finding in Scripture. If we read the Bible, we will understand that we were created to serve God. And so this desire to be obedient to God's command ought to be a strong motivation to embrace this discipline of serving, a spiritual discipline of serving because we have a desire to obey God, to obey his word, to say, yes, Lord, I hear what you want. I want to obey. Are we motivated? Am I motivated by a desire to obey? Am I motivated by gratitude? This is a huge thing, not guilt, but gratitude. Uh, do, we do, uh, do we do the humble, hard work of serving others out of, out of a, a gratitude for what God has done for us? Uh, if we understand our guilt before God and others, and if we understand God's grace to save us, forgive our sins, remove our guilt, uh, then this gratitude will just arise from the depths of our being. And, and we'll say, like Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me, because we're grateful for what God has done. Uh, am I motivated by gladness is the next one. A am I motivated by um, a sense that this is something I'm happy to do? Psalm 100, a uh, very familiar song for us Presbyterians. Serve the Lord with gladness. Is that, and, and, and it's wonderful that we Presbyterians are so familiar with the old hundredth, but have we listened to what we've sung? Has it, it impressed itself uh, on our heart, our affections, uh, our emotions? Am I serving the Lord with gladness? Does that motivate me to serve God and others. I mentioned this um, before with gratitude, but it's worth repeating that we ought to be motivated by forgiveness, not guilt. Uh, we, don't, we don't serve in order to be saved. It's because we've been saved that we are enabled to serve. Uh, we serve from the truth of our salvation, the reality of our salvation, not in order to. And so we need to understand uh, that God has taken our guilt away and then we are motivated to serve. Again, this, uh, this scene explicitly in Isaiah's vision, Isaiah 6, where he is acutely aware of his sin. Woe is me, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips and, and have a, I'm in a people of unclean lips. And God forgives his sin. That coal from the altar is touched to his lips. And then Isaiah says, here I am, send me. Well, last one, one of the 
important motivations to serve uh, is humility. A am I motivated to serve by humility? Not because it, it gives me a good um, uh, profit. It, it brings something of benefit to me. Uh, that's, a, that's a natural motivation that I'll do this so that someone else owes me and then they'll do something good for me and I'll feel better because my needs have been met. Uh, that kind of motivation is not a motivation to Christian service. That's a motivation to self-centered service, that I'm doing something for you only because I want you to do something for me or, or because it'll help me get what I want in some way. No, a Christian motivation to serve is a motivation of humility. And this is, this is Christ. And this leads to Christ-likeness. Have this mind in you, which was in Jesus Christ. Who, though he was God himself, did not hold on to that, but became a servant. What kind of um, motivations do you have uh, to serve? Well, there's several more, and, and this, this set comes from a book called Servanthood as Worship by Nate Palmer, a, a little book by Cruciform Press. And so let's just run through these uh, four, I think. Am I serving because of the glory of God? Uh, in other words, do I see my service as part of my worship, that I am so astounded, so astonished, so in awe of God, of his character, of his work, of his glory, that I am excited uh, to serve him. And it is an aspect of my worship, and I understand that. And so I am motivated to serve God and others because I worship God. I see the glory of God. I want to magnify the glory of God. I want others to know the glory of God. And so as part of my worship to God, I serve not only him, but I serve others as well. Am I serving because I appreciate who I am in Christ? I thought this was an, a, a wonderful insight. Uh, do I know my identity is secure in Christ? Do I understand that it is not that my value to God is a result of the work of Christ and that I am united to Christ by grace through faith and that that can't be touched, that my identity is secure? Some of us serve because we need the affirmation of others. But if we have God's affirmation, if we understand that God is pleased because we are in Christ, his son, uh, and that then that frees us up uh, to work, uh, to serve, uh, even when others don't appreciate us, uh, even when others are not uh, perhaps pleased uh, with us. But we're doing it for the Lord, and we're doing it out of a love for him, uh, and we're doing it because we appreciate who we are in him. We have that sense of our identity. Am I serving because I adore, desire, and enjoy God's active presence? Uh, this, again, a, a delightful chapter to read. And Nate Palmer, the author, begins by speaking of this military term, forlorn hope. And... Um, it's that, it's that term that military strategists use for the first wave. Uh, you think of the, uh, the, the boats disgorging the soldiers as they went up on the beaches in Normandy and so forth, and they were slaughtered. And you, you might think, well, why? Why am I serving? Why am I doing this? What's the point? And we become hopeless. Um, and, and so we're demotivated to serve. But, but that ought not to be. There is no forlorn hope here. We serve because we adore.
adore the Lord. And as we serve, we understand that we're doing it with his strength, with his grace. We understand that we are not alone. Uh, we are that Christ is with us, that the Holy Spirit has been given to us, and that that the Holy Spirit's presence, blessing, enabling grace is essential to serve the Lord. And so we desire that. We enjoy that. Uh, we, we have a sense of being strengthened uh, as we serve the Lord and serve others in the name of Christ. And it's a, it's a delight. We, we long for that. And, uh, and so it's a motivation for us to continue to serve. Uh, last one here on this uh, list from uh, that book, Servanthood as Worship, um, comes right from Paul's letter. Uh, you are not your own. You have been purchased. You've been bought with a price, the very blood of Christ. Uh, and so we no longer belong to ourselves. And that's a question, that's a good question for us as we consider this discipline of Christian service, discipline of serving. Am I serving because I no longer belong to myself? And so my, I, my, I am not in the center of my world anymore. What I want takes a backseat to what God wants and what he shows me I ought to be doing in his name for the sake of him, for the sake of his glory, out of love for him and out of love for others as well. We are willing to, willing servants, willing to be used by God in whatever way he sees fit. Uh, oh, there's one more. Am I serving because I have an eternal perspective? Uh, this helps us as we think of uh, the hopelessness, as we think of the pointlessness that can sometimes cause us to stop serving, to give up, uh, to say it's not worth it. Uh, there are no tangible, there's no, uh, I, I don't see any fruitfulness here. But if we're serving because we have an eternal perspective, we'll serve because God has called us to be faithful. We'll leave the results to him and we will know that God will be successful. He will build his church and the gates of hell shall not stand against it. And so we can continue to serve even in very difficult circumstances because of the glory of God, because of who we are in Christ, because God is actively present with us. And we love that because we're no longer our own and because we have an eternal perspective. Again, just a reminder, uh, as we're kind of running through all these, that uh, this is being recorded and will be posted, uh, available through the website if you want to revisit these slides uh, and think, rethink about some of these motivations or some of the other things. Now, there are wrong reasons. Uh, there are motivations that are uh, dangerous. And so let's just talk about a few of these. First of all, uh, it, we are naturally, as we've said, self-centered. Uh, Self-righteousness uh, is all too easily uh, deceptive, and uh, we can fall into this trap. As Jesus spoke the Sermon on the Mount, uh, we know that part of his condemning of the Pharisees was because of this very sin, self-righteousness. One of the consequences when we serve from a self-righteous motivation is that we begin to look down on others and condemn them because they're not serving well enough. Uh, they're not serving like us. They're not serving in the way we want them to or we think they should. And friends, this is a very dangerous thing, uh, especially if we have a, 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 an area of competence. If we have a, a natural ability, we can use that, not in a sanctified way, but in a self-righteous way. And so we are critical of others. They're not doing it the right way. They're not doing it the way they ought to do it. Um, 
we need to be very careful because one of the one of the outflows of this self righteousness is that we actually cause others to not want to serve. We don't make serving in the church or in our home a happy thing. Uh, we don't. It's not done out of a joyful, sanctified uh, sense. But this self righteousness just crushes the spirits of many, uh, makes others cringe, and we need to be very careful. It's very dangerous. Another danger uh, in in serving is that we might seek to use. Uh, serving to manipulate others. Now, we can do this in uh, several different ways, but let me just say, uh, uh, let me just say one because I've, I've previously alluded to the other. Uh, the one that I've already alluded to is serving so that somebody will do something for us. That's a self-centered service. It's not, it's not sanctified. It's not a spiritual discipline. The other way, the other uh, thing that we can do is that we manipulate others to serve us. Um, now, we want to uh, manipulate circumstances, manipulate uh, uh, their emotions. We, we want them to do what we want. Uh, we need to be very careful uh, of this. It's, it, it is a, a real danger. Um, we can fairly easily uh, try to put people on a guilt trip uh, to make them do what we want. And as parents and grandparents, as uh, ad adults uh, or children, we need to be careful uh, of this. We, we can uh, serve uh, in the church and use that service as a way to manage God. I don't know if you've ever thought of that or felt yourself becoming a little disgruntled in your service because there doesn't seem to be any tangible benefit or blessing. Uh, this is a way of serving in the church because we're going to um, do something for God so that he will owe us. He will then do something for us. This is very dangerous. And we need to be very careful. Uh, Nate Palmer, again, brings this out. And, and he talks about, as he, a newer Christian, the joy of serving uh, out of gratitude uh, for, the, for God, God's grace, God's gift of salvation for the church and a recognition that, that we're all in this together. And if that, uh, that if you know, someone doesn't get there early to set up the chairs, uh, we can't have church or do the, um, do the uh, sound system, then we won't be able to hear church. Uh, but then it became a way for him, as he relates in his book, uh, to, uh, to, to manage God in the sense of a tit-for-tat kind of thing. Uh, he sinned in some way, a sin of omission, a sin of commission during the week, and he said, well, that's okay. God will forgive me because I'm working for him on Sunday. I'm getting there early and doing all this hard work, and so he owes me. We need to be very careful. Last one, another danger is that uh, when we serve for wrong motivations, when it's self-centered service, uh, it's very easy for our serving to become meaningless in our own eyes, and we grow resentful. We go re grow resentful <clears throat> either to God because he hasn't blessed us in the way we think he ought to bless us. We go, grow resentful of others for asking us to serve and, and not appreciating us the way we feel we ought, or, or, or um, we're not receiving the benefits from serving that we think we ought from others. Uh, we grow uh, resentful because others aren't doing the work, and so we, we feel like we have to. Friends, there are real dangers here that we ought to be aware of and think about and, and pray against. However, uh, in addition to the dangers, there are also excuses. Um, now, perhaps you could email me some of your favorite excuses that you've heard or used uh, not to serve in the church, uh, in the home, 
at work, in, in the world, and so on. Uh, these are just off the top of my head. Uh, sometimes we say, I, I don't have time to do that. I'm, I'm just too busy. And, and the reality is that most of us live very busy lives. And so the question uh, is one then of priority, it is one then of considering what we're busy doing. Are we busy for the Lord? Uh, are, are we seeking to serve him with gladness? Or are we busy being selfish or self-centered? Uh, a second one that I often hear uh, is that, I'm not called, this isn't my gift. And there's some legitimacy in a sense of wanting to use our gifts, yes. Uh, of wanting a sense of call, yes. And, and there are some things that we ought not to do unless we feel a sense of call. For instance, enter the ministry or even accept ordination to an office or service on a board. However, this can become an excuse, uh, something we say because it sounds spiritual, but it's really just a way of not serving. How about these other three? Uh, it's inconvenient, and so we, we make up something. Um, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't meet our schedule. It, it doesn't look like there's going to be much benefit for us. We don't like the person or people we're supposed to serve. Uh, now, uh, let's just take the nursery for a minute. Not that these little children are lovely, lovely children. Uh, but we may say, well, I don't want to wipe their noses or their bottoms. Um, how about this uh, last one? I don't like the person or people that I'm asked to serve with. Uh, these are all excuses that we can give, but I would ask us to really consider and pray about whether they're legitimate uh, or not. Every person, every part of the body has a place to serve. Uh, we, I believe very firmly that the Bible teaches every member ministry, uh, that minister ministry is not just for those who are in full-time uh, vocational ministry. Uh, vo ministry is not just for pastors, or, uh, but every person is part of the ministry. And where do we see this? Well, we see this very much in the Bible. We see it in Romans and Corinthians and Ephesians so clearly. Uh, there's a diversity of gifts in Peter, and every Christian is gifted to serve. Uh, and so we all have different gifts, but those are necessary, each one, for the good of the body. And the body, there is a unity of the body. We are a diversity of gifts, but unified as the body of Christ. One person the eye, another the ear, another the hand, the foot, and so on. Uh, but this also brings out the truth that the local church is our base for service. And again, that's from Nate Palmer's book, uh, Servanthood is Worship. The local church ought to be uh, where we serve. I won't say primarily, but it ought to be a priority uh, because it's from the communion of saints uh, from the, the, the body of believers together that as we serve one another, that we are strengthened, that we are encouraged, that we go out with others uh, to serve uh, the world in the name of Christ. And so the, our service in the church is extraordinarily important. Our service from the church being launched out uh, as God's people into the community uh, where we've been placed is is also important. So the question is, are we encouraging each other? Uh, do we ever ask, um, I'd like to encourage you to serve. What's God been laying on your heart recently? Is there something you want to do uh, that you see would fill a need? Um, is there a, a way that I could pray for you to serve um, and and wrestle through some of our natural hesitancies or or reluctance or excuses. And then um, the, the final question here is, do we desire to be useful? Are we willing to serve? Uh, the expectation from God that we will serve is clear in scripture. Uh, the need 
is also clear. The question comes down to oftentimes our willingness. We can, we can, if we are willing, find time. If we are willing, we can serve in all sorts of wonderful ways. Serving also stretches us. Um, sometimes we have an either or mindset when it comes to serving. Uh, we might say, well, I've been gifted in this certain area, and so I'm not going to serve in this other area. But the, one of the ways that serving stretches us is because they're not only, God not only gives us gifts, but he gives us grace. And so we may be called to serve for a season, serve for a time in a particular area or ministry that we're not necessarily gifted in. We don't perhaps have the natural abilities even that can be sanctified, but God gives grace. Uh, even our, uh, in our weakness, uh, God's grace is sufficient. And so if there's a crying need uh, for that, that you see uh, to serve, pray for grace and go serve. Share that burden with others, share the need with others, and God, uh, and pray for those who are gifted in that area uh, to come along. But don't not serve just because you don't feel it's your gift. We also have this both and of passion and opportunities. It's not an either or. We, we can't say or ought not to say, well, I'll serve in this area because I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate about uh, helping people know the truth, and so I'm going to I'm going to serve in this particular area. Uh, well, what about the opportunity to do something different? An opportunity that arises to serve a real need. Uh, uh, will we say no? No. Let's be willing in this discipline of serving to be stretched, and and ask that God would give us eyes to see the opportunities all around us. Serving uh, stretches us because it humbles us. And humility is a, a Christ-like virtue that we ought to be pursuing. Finally, serving stretches us because it, there's delayed gratification usually, uh, very often, with service. Christian service does not necessarily, especially the discipline, the, the, the hard work, the conscious effort to do things for God and for others that we wouldn't perhaps normally do. Um, very often there's delayed gratification, but that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing for the Christian to remember that we live and serve to hear Christ say, Whatever you did for the least of these, you did to me. To hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. So even if it's not until we see Christ face to face, that's enough for us. Now we need to be careful. Uh, we need to be careful because our Christian service is not a competition. Uh, uh, now I need to speak to some people particularly here who have a very competitive spirit and so almost anything they do begins to become a competition. But our Christian service is, use, is God using the diversity of gifts and the unity of the body for his glory and the good of others. And so having, uh, seeing our service as competition can be something that motivates in a good way, but we need to be careful because oftentimes it doesn't end up well. Uh, we begin to have an attitude of doing it just to win, doing it just to prove to others that we're better at whatever it is. Uh, I'm, I'm a, you know, we have a potluck uh, and perhaps um, it becomes a competition. Who has the best pasta salad? Um, we, uh, whatever. So it's, it's not a competition. <laughs> Uh, secondly, and, and this goes right along with this, another danger is, uh, another thing we need to be careful of is that we start comparing. We start comparing our gift to someone else's gift, and we devalue the gift that God has given us, and we elevate in an ungodly and unhealthy way the gift that they've been given. And we start to idolize, or we start to be jealous. Uh, don't start comparing. 
God has, in his wisdom, given gifts to people. And those gifts are different to different people. And that's a good and God-honoring thing. Our attitude matters. Uh, I don't know if you've ever run across this. I know my parents uh, did when I was growing up. Um, I would uh, outwardly be obedient. Go clean your room, David. Outwardly, I would go do that, but I'd be grumbling and muttering, and it would be begrudging, and, and it's not, that's not serving. That's not Christian service. That's not embracing the discipline of serving. Our attitude does matter. And then also this observation, and this is from Don Whitney's chapter, that most serving is like an iceberg. In other words, 90% of it goes unnoticed, unseen by others. And sometimes 100%. Uh, there are times when we will be doing perhaps some menial tasks for the glory of God and the good of others, and no one will see, no one will so show appreciation, uh, and we need to understand that God sees, that he sees our hearts, our thoughts, uh, and um, all that we do. So it's okay uh, to not be noticed uh, by, by others. Well, just some concluding thoughts here. Serving is often hard work. That's why we need to see this as a discipline. Uh, the discipline of serving in, uh, for the glory of God the good of others, the pursuit of godliness in our own lives means that we won't uh, shy away from the hard work. Uh, we will look for opportunities to serve. Uh, we will be uh, appreciating that most of these opportunities don't bring instant gratification. Many of these opportunities are difficult things, uh, difficult for us perhaps not physically, although that can be true, psychologically, as it were, uh, that it, it grates against our sense of who we are. I shouldn't have to be doing this. Why isn't so-and-so doing this? I don't want to do this anymore. Um, this is why seeing serving as a spiritual discipline is so healthy, it's so helpful. Uh, it's often hard work, and if we didn't embrace it as a discipline or practice or desire to have this as a habit, it would be all too easy to not do it. Secondly, serving is a great privilege. Yes, it's hard work. Yes, we often wouldn't want to do it, but what a high privilege to serve the King of Kings. Um, I'd rather be a doorkeeper, right? Uh, we, we, we need to understand that all of our service when done for Christ is a huge privilege that we should be excited about seeing more opportunities, more ways to serve, not just in the church, in our homes. What a privilege it is uh, when a husband serves his wife. That's loving her as Christ loves the church, laying down his life for her, denying himself for her, loving her in these tangible ways. What a blessing children have to serve their parents, to look around, not just on Mother's Day and say, hey, mom, can I cook the meal today? But to be aware of all the work that goes on in the home and to see serving as a great privilege, a way of blessing, a way of glorifying God. And then find, uh, next, next we see serving for the sake of Christ shows tangible evidence of his saving work in our lives. We oftentimes in, in parenting talk about the fruit or in, in our Christian lives talk about the fruit. Jesus says you will know a tree by its fruit. James talks about this, our good works being evidence of the reality of our faith. If it's saving faith, there will be service for God and in the name of God for others. So serving for the sake of Christ shows tangible evidence of his saving works in our lives. Now there can be hypocrites, those who pretend 
that's not there's no denying that just if you're if you're uh, coming uh, and serving um, that, that, that it may be uh, a self-centered even that however if we are saved we will serve uh, the service is not going to look the same for everyone but if we are saved we will want to serve so last thing do you say you believe do your good works prove it will you embrace the discipline of serving for the glory of god for the good of others for the good of yourself because you're pursuing christ likeness you understand who you are you understand what god has done for you your natural then inclination is to want to please God, is to desire to glorify Him. May this discipline of serving in your home, in the church, in the world, may it bring great blessings to you and to others. So God bless you as you serve, and I pray that we will be able to meet sometime soon why don't we close in prayer lord thank you for this new idea a discipline of serving may we may we seek to understand better may we study this may we look in scripture to see examples of service may we want to be um, those who are known as servants of the lord May we want to be those who have the heart of Christ, who humbled himself and became a servant. May we desire, may we have grow in the motivations, uh, the good godly motivations, biblical motivations to serve. Lord, help us as a church, help us as individuals, help us to talk to each other about the difficulties we have serving about the wrong views we've had of service, about how we can serve others well. And may we encourage one another and help each other in this. We pray in Jesus' name.